Hello and welcome to Excel class number six. This is our third in our series on preparing and creating a management account template. At the end of the last video, I completed the, for the spreadsheet by copying across the data validation in the cells for exclude, include, drop down. What we will start doing in this, in this video is creating the formula to include, to automatically include the columns we want to include. So this formula is going to be the sum ifs formula. So sum ifs formula. Sum ifs. Okay, so let's get started. What I will do during this is I'll show you some common mistakes that can be made in creating a formula and how to get around them. So we'll start off, we'll go equals to start editing. Sum, again, you can see from the list all the different formulas that you can choose from. So we're using sum ifs. Hit the tab button. Okay, so sum range. So what range do we want to add? You need to be careful when using sum ifs versus sum if. Sum if uses one criteria. Sum ifs uses multiple criteria. The screen prompts down here in sum ifs are easier to understand than the sum if formula. As we'll be using multiple criteria, sum ifs is the appropriate formula. But you could use sum ifs even if you're only using one criteria. So the range, so what range? So right, right arrow over. So the range I want to use is, I'm going to select from this cell here over to the end. You'll see I've created a column of X is just as a helper column. And some range is F12 to BB12. Okay, and what is the, cre that's the sum range. That's what we're going to add. What is the criteria range? Okay, so the criteria range we want is actual, so right over to the end. Okay. Note that I'm actually selecting the from the start to the end, but we will have a it will create a problem later on. The criteria that we want is so actual versus budget. So the criteria is the criteria in the top of our column is actual. Okay, and that's the first set of criteria. The second set of criteria we're going to use are the include and exclude formula validation. So again, across to the end and up the exclude and include. Now again, I created, we could have centered across and only used one include exclude dropdown per, per period. I used the individual just to give myself more flexibility later on and that should be our formula so when we press return our formula should work however it hasn't worked so why it hasn't it worked this is the first of the common mistakes or at least the common mistakes i make that i just want to highlight to your attention so if we press f2 on the keyboard it'll give you the edit mode so straight away you can see the range here is not the same as the range up here okay so we need to edit the range so we can bring the mouse, hover the mouse over it, and click and drag, and click and drag. Okay, and that's fine. No, normally I do it by editing the formula itself. So we'll see if we press enter on that, it still doesn't work. So why doesn't it work? So again, so we could press F2, scroll over to the end and see what's wrong at the end. We'll just do it visu visually here. So our range that we're going to sum our sum range is F12 to BB12. Our criteria range is only goes as far as BA12. It should have gone as far as BB12. So let's update that to BB12. Now our ranges match. If we press return on the keyboard, we can see that we have 300. So again, so where does that 300 come from? That 300 comes from the actual and excluded figure for for month one for month two and for month three so again so let's change our formula here our drop down we want to include okay it goes to zero change to exclude back to 300 okay so we want to copy our formula again another thing to be very careful of let's copy this down first of all and we see it's not working let's copy it across we can see it appears to be working. Okay, so what's gone wrong? Why isn't it working? 
So let's come down to the cell here and press F2. Hey presto, there we go. The, the formula is no longer linked to the correct cells. Let's go over to our prior year figure here and F2. Again, the answer appears to be correct. However, we can see by going into edit mode, our formula is no longer correct. So how do we get around that? What we don't want to do is to have to type in the formula into every cell. What we would like to be able to do is copy and paste. So to do that within Excel, we need to lock the references. So if we look at, again, we'll go into F2 for edit mode. Okay, so we can see, okay, as we copy across to the right, we always want it to start on cell F. So again, color, co color coordination here, we've got F. So we always want it to be on F as we copy across. So if we put a dollar sign in front of F, it locks the column F. Similarly, at the end, we definitely we don't want it to go past BB. So we want to lock it, lock that column BB as well. So we'll put a dollar sign in front of that. If we copy it down, do we want it to come down? Do we want this range here to come down? Yes, we do. So we won't lock the row number. So let's look at the next criteria. The next criteria is F9 to BB9, which is our headings. So again, so if we copy to the right, do we want to lock it? Yes, we do. If we copy it down, if we copy the rows down, do we want to lock it? Yes, we do. Because as we copy down to this one here, we want to keep it locked to our header. Same for BB9, lock and lock. So we want to lock the, the column and the row. So again, a shortcut for this is F4 on the keyboard. So you can see we've now F4 has given us locked. Whoops, it did it, escape. I clicked on that with my mouse, so I may start again. So F2, edit. So I've lose shortcut keys, F4, F4. So we want to lock it to the column F12. That's fine. Same thing, F4, one, two, three. Lock to the column. Don't lock the row. On F9 range, F9 to BB9, we want to lock the column and we want to lock the row. So F4 once, column and row. Or C9, well, it always needs to be locked to the row 9. Does it need to be locked to the column C? No. When we copy that across, we want it to come across. So F4, F4. So C is not locked and 9 is locked. F8 to, D, D, to BB8, similar to the previous one, lock both column and row, and lock both column and row, and C8, just lock the column. Or sorry, just lock the row. And enter. Now we've created the, we've locked the cells where we need to lock them, so we should now be able to copy right and down. And there we have it, we 300, 300 across and 300, 300 and 300 down. So let's go and click on this one and go into edit mode, F2 to go into edit mode. And we can see, yes, they're heading, it's over the correct headers and the correct columns. And the correct, row, correct, correct rows are also selected. So everything there looks to be okay. So how does our formula work? The sum ifs, so it's criteria, it's based on criteria. So why is 300, is it only bringing 300 here? when it's actually adding all of this range? Well, it's because this is the only criteria that matches. If, for instance, we were to type in over this one here and type this as actual, you will see this will change to 400 and the corresponding change to 200. The current budget amount changed to 200. So you can see this is the criteria that's using. So let's go back to budget, control Z. Same for up here, using similar type of thing. So we have a drop down. So Normally speaking, in our total column, we also always want to include. So we'll click on include, and this will be the default. We would leave the total to be default included. During the year, we would leave the, when we'd start our year with our new spreadsheet, we would have everything excluded because we only want to see certain months. So we want to, month one is finished and January, we want to see our January counts. So we click on include, include, and include. Now we have our January counts. So we have our January figures and we have our total. So we move now to month two. I'm just going to copy and paste for speed. So copy that. So we now we're moving in. We've gone to month two. We want to look at our, our individual months, month one and month two. But we also want to see what the cumulative for the year is. And paste that to include. So now we see it. Our cumulative for the year is 200. Our period, our period totals are 100. And we will include month three as well. 
there you have it. Now we've got our totals. We've already some ifs or basic some ifs formula built into it. You can see you see how simple that that is. So again, we don't we only want to see accounts for the actual for two for two months for month one and month two. So let's change include on month three to exclude. And there you have it. You've got your totals for two months. And include. The reason, the, the real reason why this is so effective is if you have your Excel linked to a data source which automatically updates, that data source can bring in figures for months, say, can bring in figures for month three, but you may only be reporting to month two. So you need to have a way in Excel of excluding that data from your report to management. That's all for this video. Next video, we will look at some more formatting and we will look at some subtotals and totals on the accounts. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Use the comments to give me suggestions for things you'd like to see in future videos and please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.